for the session. Okay, the time is nine and today is 14th April 2022. And we have discussion on the past three first. Question paper code is 12, is a winter 2017 and component 23. Shall we stop? Question number one, the plant Mimosa pudica has leaves that fold in when touched. This demonstrates movement and which other characteristics? A, B, C, O, D. D, yes. So movement is already because it's moving, so changing the position, location, whatever. And sensitivity is because it is showing some changes based on the changes on the environment. Question number two, there is a diagram that shows a section of DNA from a chimpanzee. So, which diagram shows a section of DNA from the organism that is most closely related to the chimpanzee? A, yes, because only one base has changed, but most of the bases are the same. So I need to make this one a bit smaller, okay. The diagram shows the structures associated with the leaf. What is the level of organization of the part shown in detail? Cell, organ, organ system, or tissue? Yes, it's tissue. Group of similar cells, as you can see. The shapes, everything is the same. Question number four, the diagram shows a pollen grain of a rice plant. The size of the image is 40 millimeter. The actual length of the pollen grain is 40 micrometer. By how many times has the diagram been magnified? This is what you have measured. 40 millimeter is very quite big, and it means that you have used the ruler to measure it. So it's what you have done. It's, 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 in my size is what you have measured. And this, oh, it is in millimeter. You need to do the conversion first. Each one millimeter equals to how many micrometer? 1,000, isn't it? 1,000 micrometer each one millimeter. We have 40 millimeter equals to how many uh, micrometer? So you have to do the conversion. So this one times this one divided by this one and you write the answer here yeah, becomes 40,000. <clears> 40,000. The formula is magnification equals to image over the actual size, like what is in the real size, in the life size uh, of the or, or whatever the cell. So the DA or actual size, the real size is 40 micrometer. So this one becomes 40,000 divided by 40. So it is 1,000 times bigger, right? Answer is D. Question number five. Three equally sized pieces of potato were put into different concentration of sucrose solution. One piece of potato was put into distilled water. The concentration of the sucrose solution were 0.2 grams DM cube, 0.4 gram DM cube, and 0.6 gram DM cube. The graph shows the changes in the mass of the potato pieces over a period of 60 minutes. Which piece of potato was put into distilled water? A, yes. And the reason?
Okay, the change in the mass of the potato pieces, you see that it has minus and it has a B positive and minus a data here on the left. The minus one shows that it has lost water. So it means that the mass has become less than the initial mass. What it had been, it has lost water. So that's what we have minus one. It means that the mass is now less than the original, so the, what they have started with. So during the time. So D has lost water. If that cell has lost water, it means that the amount of water inside the cell should be more than outside. It means that they have placed it in the, it is this D is the highly concentrated solution, the highest concentration of the solution. It means that 0.6 gram dm cube should be D. But C, it means that there is no change in the mass of the potato compared to what you have started with. What does it mean? It means that the water has not neither gone out, nor come in. So it means that the, uh, the amount of water in and outside of the cell is the same. It's like an example of the isotonic uh, solutions. So it means that it can be 0.4 gram dm cube. It means that the, the, uh, this is the concentration also of the solution uh, inside the potato too. So I mean, you know, 0.4 gram dm cube uh, inside the uh, potato and also, also 0.4 gram dm cube. It is what actually the real uh, osmotic pressure of the potato is. Now, B, when you move up, because the, the number become more positive, it means that they have, the water has gone inside it. So that's why you see, you see that uh, the size is has increased and become compared to the, in what we have started with, the size has shown a very distinctive uh, changes. So it is more positive, it means the largest amount of the size changes has happened in A. It means that the, mo the most water has gone inside the potato. So it means that outside has lots of water compared to the inside of the potato. It means outside is, should be a dilute solution. Which one is the most dilute solution? So A is on can be distilled water because distilled water is just a pure water it has no impurities in it it equals to zero for example gram dm cube of su sugar or sucrose solution in it so that's why a is the answer because this is the most dilute solution here distilled water and you see that the greatest change in the mass of the potato has happened here. And a red blood cell and a palisade mesophyll cell are placed in a solution which has a higher water potential than the cell. What will happen to each cell? So the first thing that you have to notice here is that they just want to maybe make it a bit complicated, but not mentioning what happens to animals, so what happens to plants, so what they are placed differently or treated in a different concentration of the solution. And instead, they give you an example of the cells from the plant and animal. The example of the plant cell here is palisade mesophyll cell, and example of the animal cell was a red blood cell. So you should know the question actually is asking you this, that what are the behaviors or what happens to the animal and plants are differently individually when they are placed into different concentration of the solution or inside a, um, in a solution has a higher water potential. It means in a very dilute, dilute solution. When you put it in over pure water in distilled water, what happens to plants? Are, what happens to animals? So this is the question. So we have to say that because in the dilute solution, in a very first the distilled water, because there are lots of water outside compared to the inside of the cell, the water goes inside the cells. So we know that the cells should get bigger. And if this continues, because the red blood cells or animal cells, they don't have that cell wall, they can lose the integrity of the cell membrane and they can burst. So either the answer should be A or B. Now, what happens to the palisade cell? It doesn't burst because it has a cell wall. So A cannot be the answer. Sometimes it's how if you are not, uh, if you are in dubious, you don't know which one you have to choose. This is the best way. Just to omit the wrong ones and then find the finally the answer. So it gains mass. So answer should be B.
Question number seven. So the diagram shows evolutionary tree based on a computer generated study of different sea mammals. As you can see, yeah. According to this evolutionary tree, which whale has DNA based sequence that all least share, least share the question, least share with the other whales? A, beaked whale. Because if you look at the branches here, um, these two are both they show much more closer to the common ancestor, dolphin and uh, porpoise. And then after that, the rest of it, which is branch, are all of them are connected to each other, but except the big whale, which is left there, and it is a bit based on the length of this part of the diagram, it is a bit further from the common ancestor. So that one should be the only one which doesn't actually shares the least among the others. So answer is A. Question number eight, what is the color change shown by the genetic solution when heated with the reducing sugar? Okay, genetic solution is just to test the amount of sugar. The more sugar you have, it changes its color based on what actually how strong the concentration is or the solution is. The more the concentration, the more the concentration, the color changes is more obvious. So original color of the genetic solution and also burret also the same, both of them, but burret is for the protein. Yes, but genetic is for the sugar. But both of them originally they have a blue color because they have copper sulfate in there. Okay, so the blue color they have. So if they don't make any reaction, it means that there is no sugar or there is no point, whatever. They stay in the same color as the blue color. So once they change to another, they need it, or they, they can change into, they give a range of the color from green, uh, yellow, orange to Red. Red is the highest concentration of the sugar for this genetic solution. So which one now is the answer? Pepper? No, it's for the B-red solution. It means that if this is a protein, so the protein changes the color of the B-red into from blue to purple. So this is for that test. And brown to blue black is the for test of the starch using iodine solution. And when you place the iodine, if there is a starch in it, so it changes the color from brown to uh, blue, black. Brown is a natural color of the iodine. Or oh, sometimes they say that uh, brick uh, red or something like that. It's okay. So red to yellow, no, it's not. We don't have the original color of the genetic solution is not red. So the original color is blue. So answer is blue to red. Blue to red color. So B is the answer. Question number nine, which part of the elementary canal is the enzyme that digests the starch secreted? Either it should be into your mouth or it should be your small intestine, these two, because the first breakdown of the starch happens in the mouth by using amylase and as Brooks breaks down the starch into um, amylo, uh, uh, into maltose, and then it goes into a small intestine. In the small intestine, another en uh, enzyme is produced or secreted, which is called as uh, uh, maltase, and maltase breaks down the maltose into sh small sugar molecules. That is the complete digestion of the starch happens here. So in two places, we have starch digestion. One of them in your mouth, the other one is in the small intestine. So definitely A is a, is a faggot, so it's not the answer. B is the stomach, it is not the answer. D is the large intestine, it's not the answer. That's where the absorption of the water happens. And also in the large intestine, we have some production of the vitamins and all these things. So this is not, so C is the answer, which is the initial part of your small intestine. Question number 10, the diagram shows an enzyme with eight substrate and produce and pro product molecules. Which form an enzyme substrate complex? You have to define which one is enzyme, which one is substrate, which one are product or products. So P is the enzyme. And Q should be the substrate. And R and S, both of them together, is the 
after the reaction has happened, so the all products, because the Q is broken down into R and S, is it? So the enzyme substrate complex should be when P and Q, they match together, they fix together, they bind together. So P and Q, so the answer should be A. Question number 11. The diagram shows the apparatus at the beginning of investigation into temperature change during the germination of the seeds. The temperature at the start of investigation was 25 Celsius in both flasks. After two days, the temperature in the flask is 25 Celsius. The temperature in the flask two is 28 Celsius. Which characteristic of living organisms is shown in this experiment? So the changes is very important, yeah. It says that there, after two days, the temperature in the flask one is 25 and the, and the other one is 28. I just, we have started with the 25. And let's see what are the differences between these two flasks. Dead and disinfected seeds, uh, they are dead, so they don't do anything. They are not living things, so there is no nothing happening in it. So they can't germinate. But in the second one, because they are living seeds, so there's and also there is a change in the temperature. You should know why the temperature has changed. The temperature has changed because there is a respiration going on there. The seeds are respiring to germinate. They provide energy for themselves. So what do they do? They use the sugar, combine it with the oxygen, and they produce uh, carbon dioxide, water, and a huge amount of energy, so much energy. So the energy always equals to heat, in our opinion. So that's why there is a rise in the temperature of the flask too. So this is not excretion, this is not that. Excretion is not growth. Um, it's not, doesn't have to do anything with the reproduction, uh, but it has something to do with the respiration because the, you know, the respiration process, the heat is given out because it, it, energy is being produced. So there is a change. In the flask A, we don't have to change in the temperature. It stays the same because the seeds are dead. They don't germinate, they don't grow. So that's why the, there was no rise in the heat. Question number two, what must be increased in the diet of a person suffering from constipation? B, fiber. Yes, roughage or fibers are very necessary for uh, to avoid any constipation or, uh, yeah, the stooling would be easier then. Question number 13, which sub substrate enzyme and product are correctly named? Okay, let's check together one by one. The substrate, if the food that we have is amino acid, amino acids are a small, smallest part of the proteins. They join together to make proteins. So this is, this is wrong totally. They, the substrate cannot, it should be a very big molecule. So that's why the enzyme works on it, breaks it down into smaller molecules. But it actually is upside down. They put the amino acid, which is the smallest molecule in the substrate and the product is protein, which is bigger. So I omit this one. Um, B is amylase. Everything uh, that ends with the A, S, E at the end is an enzyme. So you cannot put it under the substrate. It should be under the enzyme. B is wrong totally. C, lipase, again, the same thing. Lipase is to break down the lipid molecules into fatty acid and glycerol. So lipase is an enzyme. A, S, E at the end again. So you shouldn't put it under substrate. So what is left is D. D is correct. Maltose. I told you a starch is broken down into the mouth by using a amylase into or amylase into maltose. Then it goes into a small intestine by using another enzyme, which is called as maltase. The maltose is broken down into a smaller molecule of glucose. Then it can be absorbed into your bloodstream. Answer is D. Question number 14. A diagram shows a, a human elementary canal with a string marked in meters beside it. How long is this small intestine? One, two, three, four, five, and that part six. Yeah, starting exactly from here, now one up to here. So it is six meters.
It's very easy. So I start from number one, one meter, two meters, three meters, four, five, and six, up to here. Question number 15, what is not a use of water by plants? First one is acting as a solvent. Yes, always, not only for the plants, water is a very good solvent. Cooling the plant, yes, you also in your body use it to cool your body down and adjust the temperature. Uh, raw materials in photosynthesis, yes, because water plus carbon dioxide in the presence of the chlorophyll and the light, sunlight energy, it can make food molecule, which is a glucose plus uh, oxygen. So the water is needed. But the only thing which is wrong here is C, dissolving the cellulose cell. Why should they use to, water to dissolve cellulose? First of all, cellulose is a very uh, complex sugar and is used in the cell wall of the plant cell, and it keeps gives the shape and strength to the cells. And so they really need it. They need to make more of it instead of dissolving it. And it's not easily being digested or being dissolved at all, but so water doesn't do that. So see, it's totally wrong. Question number 16, what is the description of transpiration? Transpiration is like sweating a human being. So it's the loss of water from the plants. So loss of water, by saying this word, I think you easily can understand that should be B. But I just want to again go through the options. Exchange of gases between the leaf and atmosphere. No, it's a diffusion or gas exchange. And movement of the water from the roots to the leaf is just the um, uh, transporting water into the xylem, nothing. Movement of the water through the cells of the leaf uh, is by osmosis and it is a liquid form. But the transpiration is the water in the form of the gas vapor and is actually lost through the stomata of the leaf. Loss of water vapor from the leaves and the stems of a plant is called transpiration. So B is the answer. Question number 70, the diagram represents the circulatory system of a mammal. In which chamber of the heart are the muscles was thickest? Says because the right side of the heart, usually the muscles are thinner compared to the left. Left is thickest. And between the, the chambers, there are two chambers, atrium and ventricle. On the left side, ventricle are the thickest. So now between B and D, I have to find ventricle. Which one is ventricle? So D is pump, uh, sorry, this is right side. And so D send it to right, so this is right. And so A and D was the right side, isn't it? So I have between B and C now, I have to choose. So lung, now the oxygenated blood is going inside the heart, pouring into B first. So B should be left atria. And C should be left ventricle because it is pump, it's, it's where the blood is going through aorta pump to the rest of the body, it is oxygenated blood. So C is the answer, as you said. Question number 18, the diagram shows a cross section through a human blood vessel. Which type of blood vessel does the diagram show? Yes, artery. And the reason that we have decided for that because is a muscular layer it has, and also it has elastic fibers, connected tissue, and this allows the, the this blood vessel to uh, adjust its shape or thickness together with the uh, based on the blood pressure. So it's quite flexible. So um, it is a properties of the uh, arteries. But the veins, they are not flexible. They have valves, and also the valve of them is very compared to this one and the lumen is quite bigger compared to the arteries. Capillaries also they are they don't have these kind of tissue is only cells one cell rounded a layer of the one cell tissue. What can be passed from one person to another during blood transfusion? HIV yes. 
or uh, has nothing to do with that. It's a bacterial section of the Univalmetricina. COPD is, has to do with the pulmonary disease. Is it it's something about the lungs and infection of the lungs? And scurvy is just lack of nutrients. It has nothing to do with this, a lack of vitamin C. So HIV is a virus in the blood. So the virus can easily, uh, by touching the blood or any kind of the fluid of each other body, and if the affected person, it can be transferred into your, another person body. So as I see. Question number 20, the table shows some of the changes in occur during breathing. Which changes occur to cause inspiration? So what happens when you inspire or you inhale, you take in air into your body, into your lungs. So you, the chest needs to expand, the ribs need to expand. For this expansion, the internal, the internal intercostal muscles often attach the ribs from inside. They are relaxed, but instead the outer part or external ones, they get contracted. So our here is uh, from contract to relax because uh, intercostal, internal intercostal muscles are relaxed, but our external ones are contracted. So from relaxed to contracted, which one they become contracted? The diaphragm needs to become flattened so that it moves down. In a normal shape, when it is relaxed, the diaphragm is like a dome shape. It is curved up like that. But when it is relaxed, it's opposite. So it becomes flattened, it goes down. And external intercostal muscle, as I said, it should become contracted because they work opposite. So once the external one, they are contracted, the internal one, they are relaxed. So X, Y, and R, uh, B is the answer. Sorry, uh, C is the answer. I'm sorry, C is the answer. Um, question number 21, in an experiment to investigate anaerobic respiration, Two bottles are set up in a warm room as shown. What would happen to each balloon after the day, after one day? Sorry, I have to move this one down a bit or make it smaller. Okay. Um, okay, what is the reason? Yes, A is the answer. In order to learn to become uh, actually uh, inflated like that one, to like the P, for example, why the answer is A, because in the first one, in the first bottle, you see, we put sugar, yeast, and water. I mean, all the ingredients are given, all the things which is necessary for the yeast to become activated. And why is it activated? Is there actually breaks down the sugar molecule and in the presence of the water, so it can produce carbon dioxide and alcohol. Carbon dioxide, yes, causes the balloon to become bigger, isn't it? So, but the other one in the Q, it stays like that because there is no reaction happening there because there is only yeast and water and there is no sugar there. The sugar is needed, something that the yeast can use it to break it down. So A is the answer. Question number 22. Two pieces of an aquatic plant were placed into two different test tubes, P and Q. Each test tube contained hydrogen carbonate indicator and was sealed and kept at 20 Celsius. Test tube P was kept in the light and test tube Q was kept in the dark. The test tube, the table shows the effect of carbon dioxide on the color of the hydrogen carbonate indicator. What would the color of the indicator be after 12 hours? So answer is A. And the reason again is that has to do something with that light presence. If there is, they kept in the dark or they kept in the light. When they are kept in the light, 
um, big fruit, there is a photosynthesis happening there. So there is a starch being formed. And, and, also, and also the carbon dioxide is like being uh, consumed, isn't it? So the amount of the carbon dioxide in the environment surrounding that plant is become less and less every time because it's using it to do photosynthesis. Isn't it? So the plant B is using it, taking off the uh, carbon dioxide. But the plant Q is not because it kept in the dark and it's actually respiring. So instead of doing photosynthesis, respiring and respiration produces carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide of the environment surrounding, it becomes more and more. Based on this indicator and the key which is given to you, if it is more become orange, if it less becomes dark, that, so the answer is A. Twenty-three. What is the most important function of sweating? Remove excess heat from the body. A student begins to lose what the control of her bicycle while traveling down a hill at a speed. The concentration of which substrate will begin to increase rapidly in her blood? Adrenaline. Yes, exactly. So the answer was uh, adrenaline. And we go to the question number 25. The diagram shows a person sweating in hot weather, which what part is played by sweat glands during the process of sweating? Effector. Yes, the glands actually are producing more uh, water or secreting. The diagram shows a synapse in the reflex of flex arc. What are uh, the, um, the identities of two neurons and in which direction does the neurotransmitter pass? We don't look at the P and Q there because we won't understand anything from the diagram. What's important is the information given inside the table to you. So the neuron P and Q, uh, direction of the map passage of the neurotransmitters, usually it comes from the, either it is um, sensory to uh, relay or it is from relay to motor. So this is the direction. So I check first here, yeah, P to Q, is it correct or not? It cannot be from motor to relay because it's actually the opposite direction. The, the, uh, it means that the information is passing from the muscles going backward to the uh, receptor cells into your uh, fingers, for example. So this is wrong direction. So you should, so P to Q, which is A and B are totally wrong. Between C and D we have to choose. Q to P is correct. Is it relay to motor? Oh, sorry, motor to relay or sensor to relay? Again, motor to relay is wrong. That's the same thing that happened there. So C is wrong, D is correct, and, and, and is the answer. Question number 27, which process occurring at the synapse is prevented by the pre, uh, presence of heroin? Yes, A. And the reason is that it actually slows down the reaction, makes sure the people relax. So the, the reason is that it doesn't let the transmitters to actually connect with the receptors, to reach to them, bind with them. So that is the answer. The rest of it is wrong. So A is the answer. 28, the diagram shows half a flower after pollination, where would pollen grains be found? Because it says after pollination, usually the pollen grains definitely will be found on the Q, which is the anther. But because this is after pollination, it means that the already pollen grain had been actually settled on the uh, female part. So it means that you can also find it on the stigma of it, which is P, definitely on the P. So P and Q, A is the answer. Number 29, which environmental factor is not always a requirement for seed germination? A, 
light is not necessary because the plant doesn't have yet any uh, leaf to do photosynthesis. So it's not always necessary. 30, a pure breeding white rat was crossed with a pure breeding black rat. All their offsprings were black. One of the offspring was bred with a pure breeding white rat. What is the most likely percentage of black rats in the offspring? Pure breeding means that the both alleles are the same. They are homo actually zygous, doesn't matter what. So pure breeding, it means that we have homozygous. Black, homozygous, white. All the offsprings were black. Black, okay, this is dominant then, yeah. So being black is dominant, isn't it? So it means that, for example, his BB, because both of them are homozygous, right? And this one should be for showing that it is white. So it's just because this is pure breeding, so it should be homozygous BB, the small B. So this is dominant. So that's why all the offsprings are black in color. One of the offspring was bred with a pure breeding white rat because this is BB and BB. So all of the offspring of these two should be like this. They have this genotype. B capital, so they are heterozygous uh, in the genes. B okay, this one was actually bred. So one of the offsprings are taken. So this is BB and the pure breeding white. It means that they bred it with this one, they cross it with this one. Okay, so now if I can do the construct and says here, the table, so it becomes BB, which is black in color, and becomes BB, white. This one again, BB, black. This one is white, isn't it? So it becomes 50 50, 50% 50 black, 50% white, or Half of them is black, half of them is white. So the answer is B, isn't it? Is this one is the answer? So an organism is heterozygous for a gene with the alias T capital and T small. Which the diagram represents a diploid cell from this organism. Which is diploid. It means that it should have two chromosomes. So C and D are wrong. It has two alleles. The two alleles, one of them is dominant, the other one is small t. So A it should be answer and B is wrong because most of them are capital T. So answer is A. Question number 32, red, green, color, blindness. Red green color blindness is a sex link characteristic caused by a recessive allele. So, sex link means that you can find it on the X chromosome. Which pro prediction can be made about the children of a woman who is color blind and a man with normal vision? So look at this, if it is sex length, usually it is appears on the recessive, recessive alias should be on the X chromosome, isn't it? This is the female. It has two eggs. So in order for the female to be colorblind, it means that both of the eggs should have this allele. Which prediction can be made from which a woman has a colorblind, it means that both eggs are having this kind of allele. Otherwise, if, if it's on one egg, then that, that would be the problem. Sorry, I just put it here. Yeah. Okay. Now, how about the male? Because in, in the, uh, usually in the uh, sperm, isn't it? Sperm cell. So it carries X and Y. And so the man with the normal vision, 
It means that if I put a small b here, recessive, the band becomes colorblind because it only has one x and whatever is there, it expresses itself. So it should be without this one. Okay, so this looks normal now. So what will happen to the children? It means that boys will be colorblind, all the boys will be colorblind because one of these X's will join with the, any, any of these X's will fuse with the Y to make a male, isn't it? And both of them are here carrying the, that uh, recessive allele. So it means that all the boys will be colorblind with no exceptions. And how about the girls? The girls, if this one, mine with this one, the girl will be normal. And with this one again, normal, because this X doesn't carry any uh, colorblind allele. Okay, so it means that all the girls will appear normal, all the boys, will be colorblind. So the answer will be B. The diagram shows a vertical section through a leaf. And this diagram shows the plant that the leaf was taken from. It's very important to know that usually the leaves all the leaves, I mean, the terrestrial plants, the ones that are on the ground, on the soil, they are, their lower epidermis has lots of stomata. It do, they don't have a stomata on the upper epidermis. But what you see here, um, the upper epidermis has a stomata. Why this happening? It only happens in the aquatic plants because the leaf from the lower part, from the, the lower epidermis is touching the water and they cannot do the gas exchange. So that's why the uh, uh, stomata is on the upper epidermis. So the only answer can be D. This is the only aquatic plant. 34, what is a mutation? B, a change in a gene. It can be any reason, it can be environmental reason, it can be natural, it can be by any kind of stressors or uh, mutate mutants, mutagens, like chemicals, uh, UV rays, X-ray, yeah. 35, the biomass at each trophic level in an ecosystem is measured. The results are shown in the table, which trophic level contains herbivores. C is the answer. 36 diagram shows a food bed. What do the arrows represent? Uh, is C the, is the answer as this is the flow of the energy? Yes. And 37 lipase enzymes are used in genetic engineering to, sorry, ligase, I said ligase. Ligase enzymes are used in genetic engineering to, For example, we have a bacterium and it has its own uh, plasmid that we have another genome. Uh, we have another DNA here that we want to make some changes into it. Oh, so we have a DNA that we want to make some changes into it. And we have a, this is a bacterium and it is a plasmid of it. It is a DNA, DNA of the bacterium. It has a DNA which is circular. It has no ends, it's just circular. So we usually use this one to, make or synthesize those kind of the genes or proteins that we want. We pick it from the uh, one donor. For example, this one is the, for example, this section of the DNA from another organism is, for example, where it produces insulin, okay? We want to make lots of insulin uh, in a very high, for example, amount. So what we do, we cut these genes that they are responsible for production of the insulin. And by using restriction enzyme, I just write it here for you, restriction enzyme. Okay, from another organism, for example, a human being or whatever. 
Okay, we take one cell of it and we know that this cell, this part, these genes from the DNA of this, for example, it makes insulin. I cut it by the restriction enzyme. And also at the same time, I cut the one part of the uh, plasmid or the DNA of the bacterium here from this section. I cut it by using the restriction enzyme again. I remove this part, okay? I remove that part. Then what happens, this is a, now the DNA of the, or the plasmid of the uh, bacterium, okay? And I have already cut it, one part of it is cut by using the restriction enzyme. And now we have this part taken from the, for example, another DNA, DNA from another organism, which is responsible for, product, for making insulin. I insert it here inside the DNA or plasmid of the, bacterium, for example, I make it a different color at this one. So I put it here now. And I need to glue it together. This gluing is by using a ligase and ligase enzyme. I use the DNA ligase to now glue them together and fit it inside the place. Now the bacterium has this new plasmid inside it, but it doesn't know. The bacterium now has a new plasmid inside it, but it doesn't know. Now it follows, it gets the instructions from this new gene and it starts making lots of, lots of insulin for us. This is how they produce insulin in the factories. They, they don't, if you want to be, take it from the, our body uh, of living organisms, the amount of the insulin which is made is not too much, but the bacterium, you know, it can multiply in a very short time. We have a billions of the bacterium in a very short time. So imagine that we have a lot of insulin we produce that they can extract it from this, they can purify it and they can uh, package it and send it to the market or whatever. So this is how they use it. So they need a restriction enzyme to cut in, cut these two, and then they put it inside the uh, gene of the bacterium, but inside the plasmid, but they need to use DNA ligase, like a glue. They glue that, paste these two ends of it to the plasmid. That's it. The answer is to join human DNA to plasmid DNA. Yeah. Join them together. 38, with which kingdom do bacteria share the same genetic code? It can be all animal, plant, fungus, protoctist. So 38 is the answer. With which kingdom? Animal kingdom, plant kingdom, fungus, protoctist, they all share together. 39, what is a direct result of deforestation? Yes, increased loss of soil because of landslide, floods, and everything. B is the answer. And the last one, question number 40. The table shows the ability of three species of fish and their eggs to survive in water at different pH levels. If the eggs do not survive, offspring cannot be produced. At a lake at pH 6 contain breeding population of all three fish. If acid rate causes the pH to fall below five, which uh, outcome would be likely to occur? Okay, C is the answer. The trout and perch will survive, but produce no offspring. Yes. Because the fish eggs they don't survive, so yes, they, they themselves, they survive, but um, they cannot produce any offspring to answer the C. So this paper is ended.